understanding heart rates for cycling isn't just a question of slapping on a heart rate monitor and riding around. It's actually a two-step process and involves cycling within specified heart rate zones. But before you can calculate these zones, you have to discover your maximum heart rate, as this is the number upon which all of your subsequent calculations will be based. Now, at first glance, maximum heart rate is pretty self-explanatory. It's literally the maximum rate at which your heart can beat before the world starts to go all blurry and eventually black. But putting an exact number on this place of pain is the place to start if you want to do some serious on the bike training. Going out and simply riding your bike will certainly get you fit in a very general kind of way. But knowing exactly which heart rate zone you're actually riding in will allow you to fine tune that training to give very specific benefits such as better fat burning or increasing your VO2 max for improved endurance, strength and speed. The absolute scientific method of calculating your max is to do a maximal test actually on the bike. Put very simply, you start riding, usually on a turbo trainer, and slowly ramp up the intensity until you're at your absolute limit. But then, just when you think you can't ride any more, you do an all-out sprint for as long as you can, and the number you see on your heart rate monitor just before you pass out will be your max. And no, I'm not joking. It really is that tough. A proper maximal test has the advantage of being very accurate. But as you can imagine, it's not for the faint-hearted, as it's absolutely brutal. By far the easiest method is to use the classic formula of 220 minus your age. So for me, a 49-year-old, this works out to 171 beats per minute. While this method is very quick and easy, it can unfortunately be rather inaccurate. In the past, I've used it to get a very rough ballpark figure and then fine-tuned it using my on-the-bike experiences. As it happened, 171 was quite a bit below my actual max. As I was out riding, I could see that my beats per minute were going above this, particularly when I was riding hard up a climb, so I gradually increased my maximum until I saw and felt that it was more accurate. As a result, it's now 188 beats per minute, and I'm pretty confident this is correct, because I cannot sustain this level of intensity for more than about 15 seconds without feeling like my heart is about to explode. So having worked out your max, you can now move on to calculate the various training zones. According to what bike, there are seven of them, and they're all defined by percentages of your maximum. So there will be a little bit of maths involved, but don't worry, you don't have to be a Carol Vorderman genius at sums to work things out. So if we're all sitting comfortably, let's begin. The first is what they call the recovery zone, and refers to any ride under 60% of your max. To work this out on a calculator, you start with your max, so using me as an example, 188 beats per minute, and multiply by 0.6. This gives us 112.8, but you could probably round this up to 113 beats per minute. The benefit you'll receive in this zone is improved recovery and promote muscle regeneration. At this pace, it should feel nice and easy, and you should be able to chat comfortably. Zone 1 is between 60 and 65% of your max, so for our example we multiply 188 by 0.65 to get 122.2. Again, you could round this down to 122 beats per minute. We've already calculated the lower end of this zone, so 122 forms the upper end. When you cycle at this intensity, it should still feel fairly relaxed, and you should be able to hold a conversation. You should also be able to ride at this level for several hours. The benefit you receive here is improved fat burning and generally just getting comfortable on the bike. Zone 2 is between 65 and 75% of your max. 
In our example, this gives us a range between 122 and 141 beats per minute. At this intensity, it should feel like you're starting to work, and the benefit you'll receive is increased power and efficiency. This is where most of your endurance training should take place. Zone 3 is between 75 and 82 percent. This gives us a range of 141 to 154 beats per minute. You can certainly start to feel it when you ride at this intensity. You should be sweating and your legs will start to burn, but the payoff is increased fitness and even better endurance. Zone 4 is between 82 and 89 percent. This gives us a range between 154 and 167 beats per minute. It's starting to hurt now. You should be pretty stressed and sweating freely, but the benefit will be increased overall speed. Zone 5 is between 89 and 94 percent. This gives us a range between 167 and 177 beats per minute. At this intensity you should be gasping for breath, but the payoff will be improved time trialling and short term resistance to fatigue. Zone 6 is anything above 94%. You won't be able to maintain this level for more than a few seconds, but training at this intensity will increase your sprint speed. Many cycling computers today will not only show your actual beats per minute, but will also show your heart rate as a percentage, taking away the need for you to do any mental arithmetic on the bike. You can also use it to set an alarm if you go above or below a certain heart rate. If you have a Garmin Edge 510, I show you how to do all of this in another couple of films. So that's it. All you need to do now is arm yourself with a bike, a turbo trainer, a calculator and a phone with the local hospital on speed dial and you can start your maximum heart rate test. Enjoy.